All right, so we have Akash. Uh, take it away. Hey, folks. Uh, today I'd like to introduce you to the Derby game. It's an ordering based kernel blotto game. Up here on the slide, I'm Akash, and uh, up here on the slides, you see my amazing co authors, uh, Divya Raghunathan and Matt Weinberg. So I'd like to start by talking about competitive allocation of resources. So suppose you have two broadcasting companies, Channel A and Fox Television, and they're competing for TV viewership across several time slots. Uh, and they're competing by distributing a TV budget across those slots, and whichever allocates more of that budget, more money to a time slot, wins that slot's viewership. And uh, different allocations of, uh, of this budget result in different results for these two, com uh, two broadcasting companies. For example, in this uh, allocation right here, uh, Channel A wins the first three rounds because it has invested more money into those three rounds than Fox Television versus Fox Television wins that last round because it's invested more money than Channel A. Uh, and slightly different allocations can completely change the result of the game. Here, Box Television wins the last three rounds and so therefore wins the overall game. Uh, and what's really cool about this game is that uh, different scenarios uh, uh, can be represented with the same game. So maybe instead of talking about uh, two broadcasting companies, we could talk about two political campaigns. And instead of talking about viewership, we could talk about votes. And instead of budget, we can talk about volunteers. And this uh, is a well-known game. It's, it's, it's known as Colonel Blotto, uh, introduced by Burrell in 1921. And the idea is that two players compete for most majorities across several simultaneous rounds. And the question is, how should each player distribute their resources across those rounds? Now, it's just after the 100th anniversary of Blotto. Uh, there are many, many well-known variants. It's well studied. Um, so what can I add to this? Well, in these two examples, there's something interesting going on. Uh, and it has to do with the resources in these rounds, uh, in, in these uh, examples. So for example, uh, in the first scenario of Channel A and Box Television, we're trying to maximize TV viewership. And we are saying that whoever puts more budget into, that, into a given round wins viewership. But in reality, it's not the, the, the budget is simply a proxy for the quality of the show that's being played on that round. And uh, because TV shows uh, can't be broken up into half and put into uh, different rounds, and because TV shows, every TV show has its, is distinct from every other. And so uh, you can't interchange two TV shows and expect the same result. Uh, we use the dollar value as a proxy for the budget. And similarly, uh, in the political campaigns example, we have grassroots volunteers. These are distinct human beings, right? They're canvassers of different, uh, of, of their own, of distinct ability. And uh, we're casually converting them to identical cogs of a vote collecting machine. And we do this because of a restriction that Blotto and many of Blotto's variants have, and that is that resources must be completely interchangeable. For these two examples and for a larger class, we can do better, I think. So I want to talk about competitive allocation of non-interchangeable resources. In our first example, uh, scenario of Channel A and Box Television, instead of talking about how each company should distribute a TV budget, we should talk about how they can distribute TV shows across those slots. Modifying the, the victory constraint, instead of talking about whichever allocates the more money, we'll talk about whichever allocates the better show to a time slot. Uh, and that's, uh, that'll be the winner of that slot's viewership. Similarly, we could talk about two political campaigns that compete for votes. Uh, and in, in modifying this scenario, instead of talking about grassroots volunteers, uh, actually, I'm going to do a slightly different scenario to highlight the distinctness between the resources. Let's talk about how each campaign can distribute their campaign surrogates across the map, where whichever allocates the more popular surrogate to a district wins that district's vote. And in general, the, the game we'd like to introduce is uh, called the Derby Game. And the idea is that two players are competing for most victories across several simultaneous rounds. And the question is, how should each player distribute their non-interchangeable resources uh, if whichever player uh, allocates the better resource according to a victory relation, uh, wins the round. And uh, this game, uh, the, the name of this game is actually an homage to an ancient Chinese parable called uh, Tianji's horse racing strategy. Um, and you can read more about that in our paper. Um, so before I jump into an example, I want to give a brief roadmap of the rest of this talk. 
Uh, first, I want to introduce the derby game, and I'll do that by focusing first on pure strategies and pure strategy equilibria. Um, I'll build on our running example of channel A versus box television, um, and just uh, try and uh, uh, lay the groundwork of certain intuitions that I will then use to describe, uh, to explain our key results. Uh, specifically, we will characterize, uh, somewhat characterize mixed strategy Nash equilibria of this derby game, uh, and fully characterize a special class of Nash equilibria, uh, call, uh, which we're calling half pure. And then finally, I'll briefly give some key takeaways and describe some variants that uh, uh, I hope might pique your interest. So let's jump into to that running example. So uh, previously, we had uh, this derby game of Channel A and Box Television competing for TV viewership, and they were distributing a budget across those time slots. I'm going to make three changes to this example. The first is that uh, instead of a budget uh, being the resource type, we're going to have TV shows. Uh, and so we have five TV shows on uh, each uh, uh, broadcasting company's side. Uh, and if we're going to talk about the distribution of non-interchangeable resources like TV shows, we have to define what it means for one show to be better than the other. And so we'll have a notion of relative quality or a victory relation, uh, where Game of Scones here is, the, uh, is a TV show so good that it'll beat all the others in any round that it's played, whereas Gonna Give You Up is a TV show so bad that it will lose to all the others in whatever rounds that it's played. Uh, and finally, the, the third change that I'd like to make, that was the second, uh, is that I'm going to, instead of having every round be the same weight, uh, I'm going to add a notion of, uh, I'm going to add weights to these rounds, uh, uh, which is very standard in many different variants of Botto. But uh, uh, this is in case you have uh, a time slot that is prime time, uh, which might be worth, say, eight points, and a time slot that is three in the morning when only the programmers are awake, uh, and that'll be worth two points. Um, and so the question becomes, how should these two broadcasting companies play in this situation? One intuitive uh, strategy they might use is uh, what I'm going to call the greedy strategy, and that is to play their... Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Apologies for the delay, folks. Um, now if I switch to PowerPoint, will it work? Cool. Uh, so, uh, all right, so the question becomes, how should each of these two uh, broadcasting companies play in this scenario? One approach they might use is what I'm going to call the greedy strategy, and that is where each broadcasting company plays its best show on the highest weight rounds. Uh, and if we play in that manner, then we can compute the, the payoffs for each broadcasting company. Here, Game of Scones beats Weird Objects, uh, but House of Cards loses to Expert Cook. So Channel A and Box Television each respectively win eight points. Um, and uh, so right now, Channel A with this greedy strategy is losing. And the question becomes, can we do better than this? Uh, and indeed we can. Greedily playing the best resources on highest weight rounds is not always optimal. Uh, sorry, you have a question? Yeah, is the relative quality known to both channels? Yes. Okay. Um, so the relative quality is known to both channels. Um, the uh, rather, one trick that, that channel A can use is it knows its worst strategy, gonna give you up, is always going to lose. So might as well sacrifice it uh, to try and remove one of the uh, good shows of Fox Television. And so if uh, we sacrifice gonna give you up, then channel A can actually win more of the remaining uh, rounds. Uh, it's, uh, and so thus win the game overall. And so sacrificing some resources can lead to a higher payoff. That being said, now channel, uh, Box Television can look at it, this game and say it's playing weird objects, its highest rated uh, show, or its, its highest quality show against Channel A's worst show. 
And so if it wants to, to pursue a more narrow win, uh, maybe it can win where it, it previously lost. And so by moving weird objects uh, to swap with Box News, it's now winning both rounds, whereas previously it only won one. And so narrow wins also help each player maximize their payoff. And again, in this situation, channel A can sacrifice, going to give you up again, and improve its position. And so these techniques ensure that if both players are playing uh, pure strategies, at least one player can improve their position. There is an asterisk on that, but, but before I describe the asterisk, what this means is that there are no pure strategy Nash equilibria in the game, uh, except for in cases where uh, what I'm going to call trivial games, uh, which an example of which is shown here, uh, regardless of what strategy box television plays, what ordering of these resources it plays, uh, channel A's resources will either always win, regardless of what box television plays, or they'll always lose, depending on the resource. And so in this trivial game, every strategy uh, produces the same uh, uh, payoff, and so there are uh, pure strategy equilibria. However, this lets me move to, to sort of our, our, uh, our key results. Uh, unsurprisingly, only trivial games have pure strategy equilibria. However, there exist some non-trivial derby games that contain half pure Nash equilibria, or what we're calling half pure Nash equilibria, where exactly one player plays a pure strategy. And this is really interesting because what it means is that one of the two sides can completely disclose their strategy to their opponent and yet still do as well as if they had not hidden it at all. Uh, we're going to, to show how to characterize these half pure equilibria by combining two things, a notion of resource equivalence and our main technical hammer, which is the narrow wins theorem, which generalizes these two techniques of narrow wins and sacrifice to mix strategies. So let's jump into part two, starting with resource equivalence. So on this slide, what I have is the same victory relation that we've been seeing previously, but also that victory relation as a table. And what I want to notice is that even though box news is a better show than uh, never, uh, channel A lacks a resource that can distinguish between the two. And similarly, uh, with the, the three middle sh uh, uh, resources of channel A, uh, Box TV lacks a resource that can distinguish between these also. And so what we can do is uh, note that strategies that reorder these resources are still going to perform identically and group resources into equivalence classes. And so I'll do that now. Uh, and so we get a compressed victory relation and we uh, can now update our game to start thinking about equivalence classes of resources rather than resources and uh, effective strategies rather than strategies. So going back to our example, these are the resources grouped again now into equivalence classes rather than in uh, their individual forms. And we have the notion of relative quality below. And so a pure strategy here might just be uh, what we see uh, here, where um, uh, in the first three rounds, uh, Fox Television is playing three resources from equivalence class B1, but it doesn't matter which three resources, which order it plays those three resources in. Uh, and we can also extend this to mixed effective strategies, where in the first two rounds, uh, channel A uh, uh, is playing either a resource from uh, equivalence class A1 with 50% chance, or a resource from equivalence class A2 with 50% chance. Uh, and because they're playing against B1 with 100% chance, Half the time, channel A will win. Half the time, channel A will lose. And so half of the, the weight uh, in expectation, half the weight is given to channel A, and half the weight is given to box television. So with this notion of uh, uh, effective strategies and equivalence classes of resources, uh, we can now actually talk about, oh, uh, sorry, one more thing. With this notion of relative quality, once we group it into equivalence classes, uh, it is guaranteed to always alternate because the alternation is what determines when a resource distinguishes between others. Um, and so we're going to omit the, the, relative, uh, the victory relation from now on and say that A1 beats B1 and B1 beats, A2, uh, B1 beats A2 and so on. So now we can jump into the technical hammer, which is the narrow wins theorem. And recall, it, it's going to extend the intuition of narrow wins and sacrifice to derby games where players can play mixed strategies. I'm not going to say the, the theorem yet. I'm going to actually start by talking about a straw man theorem 
that only considers narrow winds. Uh, and the straw man theorem that I'm going to disprove it says that at Nash equilibrium, every equivalence class should have some probability of playing against the next equivalence class in every round. So if I'm playing AI in a round, uh, then because AI, the class after AI is BI, so AI has to play against BI, and then because I'm playing BI in a round, because BI def narrowly defeats AI plus one, AI plus one also has to be played in the same round. So, so let's see the counterexample to this straw man theorem. It's a little bit bigger, uh, but the thing I want to note is that box television has a lot of really good fast, uh, resources uh, in equivalence class B1, uh, but, and it wants to use those resources to win as much as it can, and it would ideally want to win those first three rounds. But the problem is that channel A has three resources of equivalence class A1, and so it can always swoop in and win those three rounds. And so B actually wants to play in such a way that it gets as much of the remaining rounds and put just enough of B1 to convince A to play A1 in those rounds. So uh, if we look at uh, the equilibrium state, so B plays it in such a way where it's playing with 100% probability in those three rounds uh, and with 33% probability in the remaining three. Uh, so what will happen is that because of this, A is forced to play A1 in those rounds. Uh, and then the remaining resources, A2 and A3, have only one place to go. B2 and B3 only have one place to go. And so they go here. Uh, and this uh, produces a Nash equilibrium where note that some resources are being sacrificed. So let's create a better theorem from this. Uh, let's say that every round, every equivalence class should have some probability of playing against the next, unless the next equivalence class is being sacrificed. Uh, we can actually strengthen this better theorem further, saying that sacrifices cascade. If AI is being sacrificed, AI plus one should also be sacrificed because AI plus one is a worse, a worse uh, resource. And so you might as well sacrifice the worse resource. And similarly, sacrifices are mutual, meaning that if uh, all of the equivalence classes of A that are worse than BI, so everything that BI beats is being sacrificed, I might as well sacrifice B. And this gets us the narrow wins theorem that says that uh, every equivalence class is being sacrificed unless all the worst equivalence classes are being sacrificed uh, uh, on every round. Uh, I'm out of time, so I'm going to uh, skip characterizing half pure Nash equilibria, uh, jump to the end. Um, so uh, the one thing I want to note is that this can be done in about a slide after you have the narrow winds theorem. So it's quite a powerful theorem. Uh, there are several interesting variants that I'd love to talk to you after. Um, but the key takeaways are this. Um, the Derby game is a variant of kernel Plato, and it's designed to model non-interchangeable resources. Um, and some non-trivial Derby games admit half pure Nash equilibria. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, questions? I guess I'd have no time for questions. Or time, sir. First, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, so the next speaker wants to get set up in the